Welcome back to Live Now from Fox. Continuing with those top stories and headlines of the day, this one takes us out to the Red Sea. According to the Associated Press, the crew aboard a Marshall Islands flag tanker hit by a missile launched by Yemen's Houthi rebels extinguished an hours-long fire aboard the stricken vessel Saturday sparked by the strike. The attack on the Marlin Luanda further complicating the Red Sea crisis caused by the Iranian-backed rebels' attacks over Israel's war on Hamas in the Gaza Strip. The tanker carried a flammable oil, drawing Moscow further into a conflict that so far it had blamed on the U.S. Joining us this morning to further explain is senior lecturer of criminal justice and homeland security at the University of New Haven, Mr. Ken Gray. As always, Mr. Ken, thank you so much for waking up with us here on Live Now from Fox and joining us. Good to be with you, Jill. So a lot to break down. I mean, when we first brought this, you were here joining us saying that this could be an ongoing thing. Many people wondering, what is this conflict about? Is it about oil? Is it about the Israel-Hamas war? How do we break this down? So the Houthis are, uh, should be considered a proxy for Iran. Iran has what is known as the axis of resistance that stretches all the way from Iran across uh, Iraq, across Syria, into Lebanon, and down into the Gaza Strip. And now uh, is the addition of uh, the Houthis down in Yemen. Uh, the, the Houthis are using missiles to, and drones to dominate the Red Sea, stopping commercial shipping in that area. And they are doing so because they are too far away from uh, Israel to be effective against Israel directly. So instead, they are attacking commercial vessels in the area there of Yemen to be able to make their their presence known in this uh, fight. But uh, in impact on Israel itself, it's having a small effect on Israel. What it is having an effect on is it's having an effect on the world's economy in that uh, for instance, uh, car manufacturers uh, in Germany and in Belgium have uh, had to halt production because they're not getting parts. Uh, fashion industry are not getting clothes uh, from uh, from Asia uh, up into Europe. Uh, you're seeing medical supplies not making it to the United States. So the Houthis, by uh, attacking ships indiscriminately across both the, the Red Sea and also now the Sea of Aden, south of uh, Yemen, uh, they are having an Im- impact on uh, the commercial traffic in the area and thus the world, but little effect on Israel itself. Mr. Ken, I'm so glad you brought up that world economic aspect of this. Many times when you hear about someone impacting the economy, that's because they want you to get those goods and services from them. But all of these items that they are impacting, we wouldn't be getting it from them in the first place. So break that down for us. Are they just wanting to halt production just in a selfish manner and just be like, you can't get this anyway? Or are they wanting us to trade services with them? So uh, Yemen has no capabilities. of uh, It has no manufacturing base. So it's not like they're trying to stop commercial traffic so that they become a, a supplier. Additionally, Iran uh, does not uh, provide uh, much, if any, uh, commercial traffic outside of its area. And consequently, this is not about commerce for those countries. This is about affecting the commerce of other countries that may be part of the combatants that are supporting Israel, um, but uh, having an indirect effect on the war by affecting the economy. They are flexing their muscle as far as commercial traffic goes uh, to try to have some type of impact on the war there, uh, but no direct impact itself. And Mr. Ken, speaking of commercial traffic, we know there is some tension between the U.S. and China. Any word on if China is um, playing a role in this? I know there was some speculation, but I know you can clear that up for us. So the main thing about China is the fact that they receive almost all of their oil from the Middle East here, and it has to go through that area going around. And so, uh, you know, if you... If you affect the uh, shipping uh, shipping of oil, you're affecting China. Uh, and so uh, they, they do have a dog in this fight. Another country to look at is uh, India. India actually uh, provided uh, a ship 
to uh, one of their warships, responded to the SOS call by the motor, uh, the motor vessel uh, that was under attack on Saturday, uh, the Marlin Luanda, uh, and the uh, Indian Navy provided firefighters onto the ship to, and also uh, equipment onto the ship to be able to put out that fire that had been going on after being struck by the missile. So the Indian Navy, which does not have any um, uh, trade interest um, going through the the uh, the, uh, the Suez Canal, uh, they nonetheless have great influence in the immediate area around India. Consequently, they are making their uh, impact felt, and they are a, a, a presence that has of yet uh, not been seen th uh, that active in this area. The crewmen on board uh, the ship that was attacked, the Marlin uh, Luanda, 22 Indian members and a Bangladeshi. Consequently, they had an interest in protecting this vessel, and so they, they did so by responding and providing uh, firefighting assistance. You mentioned India and China being impacted by these attacks. So do you see in the future that they could possibly team up with the U.S. to stop these missile strikes, or do you think they'll just stay on their side and mind their own business? India's interest in Indian uh, interest. That is, they uh, are not going to get involved in the uh, conflict there in the Gaza Strip. But what they will do is they will protect their own interests. And that includes uh, ships either with Indian crew carrying Indian goods or uh, flagged from India. And so I don't see them directly getting involved in this conflict that is going on. Even if it becomes a regional conflict, I don't see them getting involved other than protecting their own interests. Again, China's interest in this right now has been primarily that of trying to uh, be concerned about uh, oil going to China. Even though China has increased their naval uh, capabilities, they still have lacked the ability to really have much impact uh, on uh, the the Blue Sea. That is, they can't they can't really get out very far. Uh, most of their forces, uh, most of their naval uh, uh, assets, are not uh, deep water uh, vessels. So uh, I don't see China being involved with this uh, as far as the naval power goes. As we look ahead, Mr. Ken, is there any likelihood that these missile strikes could scale back? Because it seems like these are happening now on a weekly basis. So the, the United States and the UK conducted their eighth sorties against uh, Yemen, uh, against the Houthis, striking out at their both their missiles, their drones, uh, their uh, depots for missiles. And so um, every time the UK, the, uh, the US, strikes out against this. They, they reduce their capability of, of making any impact in this area. Nonetheless, return on investment. Uh, the Houthis are using low-cost missiles and low-cost drones, while the U.S. is using expensive missiles. Uh, the USS Kearney has been a player in this area since the beginning of this uh, conflict, and uh, they uh, had a missile launched at them here just yesterday, uh, which they shot down. They're doing so with uh, with very expensive weapon systems, and consequently, uh, the return on investment, low cost uh, for uh, the Houthis uh, being uh, supplied by the Iranians, and so it's uh, it's a matter of how much bang for the buck can they get uh, using these low cost missile systems? But they're running out, I think. Ken Gray, we always appreciate your insight and perspective. Is there anything else you'd like to add? I, I think that the one thing that we did not talk about was the, the result from the, uh, uh, the International Court of Justice. The International Court of Justice said that they were not requiring uh, Israel to cease activity in the Gaza Strip, but that they may have violated some uh, of the articles under the Genocide Convention. Uh, so uh, the uh, continued conflict in the Gaza Strip is still continuing unabated, and uh, Hezbollah activities have increased. And so uh, Israel could very well be facing a second front there into Lebanon with uh, the Hezbollah, uh, Hezbollah activity there. Uh, so there's still a possibility of this becoming a regional conflict.
You know, I was actually watching the ICJ uh, give that ruling. And from my perspective, Mr. Ken, I know you'll clear it up, but it seemed like a friendly suggestion, if you will, what they were saying to Israel, like, we can't make you all have a ceasefire, but we suggest you scale back the fighting. And so, as we know, the IDF said they will not stop until they defeat Hamas. So I'm interested to see uh, how this unfolds as well. So the uh, ICJ could have uh, brought sanctions against Israel to, to force them to try to uh, cease their activities. They chose not to do that. South Africa made their case. Uh, they are still continuing. This is not a final ruling. They're still continuing on on uh, their deliberations on this. But the immediate uh, call for a cessation there of activities, they did not go that far, but they did put Israel on notice that they are to maintain records of what is going on. They are to take acts to, to guarantee that genocide does not occur and that uh, they are going to revisit this at some later point. So there may still be sanctions against Israel because of these uh, accusations by South Africa. But, um, but at least at the moment, they are not told to cease activities. I've said on numerous uh, occasions here on Live Now that Israel is going to continue pursuing Hamas until, um, uh, until they are forced to stop. This did not happen in this case. You're absolutely right. And I'm sure we are all on the edge of our seats, Mr. Ken, to see how all of this unfolds and to see, as you mentioned, how this will impact other areas of the Middle East. Thank you so much for joining us this Sunday morning, Mr. Ken, for breaking all of this down and giving us that historical perspective. You enjoy the rest of your day. Anytime. Thank you so much.